Hello, I'm MK Davis. What you're looking at there is one of the exceptionally clear frames from the Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot film uh, taken in Northern California along Bluff Creek in the late 60s. Uh, now this this is a frame that was prepared for publication uh, and it's it's an excellent quality. Uh, what I wanted to do is just show you some things that are on it. Uh, for instance, let me just zoom in. And you can see quite a bit of features on it. I mean, you can make out the basic features, the nose, the mouth, the place where the eye is supposed to be. You know, the sun's coming to, kind of at an oblique angle to the face. It's, it's illuminating the side of the face pretty good coming from a down like this right here and this the eye socket is in kind of a shadow so uh, you know there's some techniques for for penetrating the shadows uh, and I'll show you some of them uh, let's switch over to another frame first before I go back into this one and I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about Okay, here we are at, at another frame. Uh, this is also from that series of photographs. Uh, this is frame 61. And it's very, very sharp. As a matter of fact, you can see uh, uh, the individual toes on the foot. I mean, it's just that good. But what I'm concentrating on mainly here, and the point I'm trying to make, is that take a look at these shadows up here on, on the, behind the Sasquatch. See, what are they? Uh, if you want to penetrate, the information is there if you know how to get it. Now take a look here. I'm going to do a color split. Now take a look at this right here. Alright, now just compare the two. Alright. Now what is this right here? You can hardly see, even see it. It's back in the shadows. Now look at it on this one right here. Look at the tree. How much detail is on it. Even though we lost the Sasquatch, it's all washed out, but we were able to pierce or penetrate those shadows and pick up some details back up in there. So there you go. Can't see anything here, hardly. And over here, you got these, uh, you got these, uh, it's easy to see, you know, the trees, tree trunk there, and all the details on it, even the individual bark lines and stuff on it. So, uh, why can't this same technique be used on the other photo, uh, in the dark areas like the eye sockets? Uh, well, it certainly can. And let's switch back to that photo. Okay, we're back at this photo again, um, and that would be frame 362. Uh, let's just take a look and see if we can make out anything in the, in the eye socket areas by doing the same thing that we did on, on the other photo, frame 3, frame 62. So let's do it. All right. What do you see there? What do you see right here? Well, about what you'd expect to see in a place where uh, 
there's an eye socket that just happens to be an eye. And and that's just how good the film really is. Uh, and and that's why I say, and people argue with me all the time about resolution limits, and they publish papers and all kinds of stuff. But if you're able to pick this up in the film, and you're able to see an eye, where an eye should be, then... That then then that film was and that lens combination and that distance was good enough to record it, or you wouldn't be able to see it. So you know you 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 have to ignore the stories. You have to ignore. Uh, this is forty five years ago. People say I was a hundred feet. I was sixty feet. I was twelve feet. I was ten feet. I was five hundred feet. You know. And you can't rely on the story. You can't rely on it. You, all you can rely on is what the film gives you, and the film gives you an awful lot. They must have been close enough with the right combination of lens and film to record this eye in the eye socket where it should be. And there we go again. The Patterson film gives an awful lot. It continues to yield data to this day. And, you know, if you know how to extrapolate the data, if you know how to get it out of there, it's there. Um, let's just back off this a little bit. See how much that sharpened the image. You know, even though you, you uh, lost the color, it sharpened it a great deal. And you're able to tell a lot more about the face. What kind of a face is this? A face only a mother could love, I guess. Um, I don't know. You know, I guess among Sasquatches, this might be a really... Uh, a pretty lady, but, you know, to us, to John Q. Public, you know, it's almost too ugly to believe uh, that anyone would be living like this primitively and looking like this. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, at any rate, anyway, as I always say when I end these things, I thank you for your time. Um, it's it's a it's worth the effort, worth the time, you know, to sit down and examine this film in its best light. Uh, it has a story to tell, and that story is profound. Um, it's. It has to do with all of us, you know. So uh, that's why I keep plugging away at it. Keep it keeps giving, so I continue to to try. Uh, and I once again thank you for your time.